McKinsey is one of the most prestigious companies in the world and is known for creating some of the most impressive visuals on the internet. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to recreate three of their most popular visuals using just PowerPoint and Excel without any additional add-ins. Let's get right into it. So, first up, we have a line and area combination chart. But before we begin, here are the font and color themes I'll be using throughout this video. If you'd like to use these exact themes, click the video link in the top right corner to learn how to create and customize font and color themes in PowerPoint. Alright, here's the data set we'll be using for this demonstration. And you can follow along by downloading this file containing all data sets for free through the link in the video description. Now, since we're going to be creating three different combination charts, I'll just copy these cells, then move to the layout where I'm inserting the chart, go to the Insert tab, Select Chart and insert a line chart on the slide. Once inserted, expand the data window, delete any unnecessary rows and columns, update the cells with your data, then copy and paste the data column. Once that is done, close the data window, open the Change Chart Type options, Select combo charts and configure it using an area and a line chart with marker combination. Next, right click on the vertical axis, select format axis and set the minimum and maximum values for the chart. Now, let's clean up the chart by adding any unnecessary elements. Then format the charts, starting with the area charts by adjusting the color to your preference, increasing the transparency and removing the outline. Move on to the line chart. So select it, go to the format series options, change the color to your preference by selecting a solid line and note the line width. For the markers, increase their size, apply a solid fill color that matches the slide background and customize the borders to match the line color and width. Next, enable data labels for the line chart and ensure they are positioned above the markers. Do the same for the area chart, enabling the data labels then customizing the labels by switching to series name in the label options. Now, refine the horizontal axis by removing the axis line. With that done, head up the slide grid lines to assist with object alignment. And using the grid lines as a guide, adjust the chart size as needed and position it toward the right side of the slide. Once that is done, increase the font size of the text in the horizontal axis and the data labels as needed. Adjust the chart size and plot area to fit the text labels correctly. Make any necessary adjustments, then increase the font size of the center label and adjust the position of the text box. After that, go to the Shapes group, select the straight line connector, hold shift as you drag to inside the straight line, position the line above the horizontal axis, make any necessary adjustments, ensure it's aligned with the chart, then go both objects together. Now, let's create a callout for the chart. So, go to the Shapes group, and insert a rectangle on the slide. Once the rectangle is inserted, increase its transparency to make it invisible, add an outline to allow for better positioning, and align it with the data label. Next, duplicate the transparent rectangle, align it with the other data label, then duplicate the rectangle again, and adjust the size and position as needed. Now, let's connect these rectangles. So, select an elbow connector from the shapes group, connect these rectangles, duplicate the connector, and then connect these rectangles. After that, change the colors of the lines to your preference. Select this rectangle, go to the Home tab, change the text color to your preference, and enter your callout text. Once inserted, format the text to your preference, adjust the rectangle size as needed, then format the rectangle by matching the color with the background and removing the transparency. Finally, select all rectangles and remove the outlines. To complete the chart templates, select all these objects and group them together. With the chart template ready, let's duplicate the grouped objects twice, ensuring that all objects are properly aligned and evenly distributed across the slide. Now ungroup the objects to work with the individual elements, then select all combination charts and send them behind all objects. Now to update the chart's data, return to the dataset slide, copy the relevant cells with the values, then go back to the chart slide, select the combination chart, Go to the Chart Design tab, choose Edit Data, place the values in the relevant cells in the data window, and close it. With the chart updated, ensure the callout elements are properly positioned. Then adjust the category label as needed. 
and update the color of text. Repeat the same process for the final combination chart. So return to the dataset slide, copy the relevant cells with the values, then go back to the chart slide, select the combination chart, go to the chart design tab, choose edit data, place the values in the relevant cells in the data window, and close it. Then ensure all chart elements are properly positioned and updated. I'll just speed run through this process. With that done, let's add titles and source notes to complete the design. For this, I'll simply paste the text from my clipboard. And just like that, we've created the first McKinsey visual. Next, we have this waffle chart with dotted grids, and over here is the dataset we'll be using for the demonstration. So, let's move to the layout where we'll create the chart, head to the shapes group, select the circle, insert it on the slide, and make the circle smaller by reducing its size in the shape format tab. After that, hold Ctrl, Shift, and drag to duplicate the circle nine times, ensuring proper alignment and even distribution of the circles on the slide. Next, group all the circles together, then duplicate the group set nine times, ensure proper alignment and even distribution of the circles vertically on the slide. Now, ungroup all objects to work with the individual circles, change them to a light gray color, group the circles again, enable the grid lines to assist with object alignment, and align the grouped circles toward the left of the slide. After that, duplicate the grouped objects for as many categories in your dataset and ensure that all objects are properly aligned and evenly distributed across the slide. Next, add your data labels as text. For this, I'll simply paste the text from my clipboard. Once inserted, ensure all objects are aligned with their respective dotted grid. I'll just speed run through this process. Once that is done, go to the shapes group, select the line, hold shift and drag to insert a straight line, Duplicate the line three times and ensure that all these objects are properly aligned and evenly distributed across the slide. Now we can ungroup the objects to work with the individual elements. Select all the lines and adjust their colors to your preference. Then select the circles and visualize their corresponding data labels by adjusting their colors. Repeat the process until all data labels are correctly visualized with their corresponding grids. Once that is done, add your titles and source notes to complete the design. For this, I'll simply paste the text from my clipboard. Alright, that's the second visual done. Now, before I proceed to the final chart, I just want to highlight our expert-led courses that are currently in development. These courses are designed for professionals in consulting, finance, and other business-oriented industries. As you know, in these fields, you're often expected to spend hundreds of hours creating presentations. And to prepare you for that, we are currently developing four detailed courses on efficient presentation design, presentation structure and storytelling, effective data visualizations, and utilizing animations and transitions for effective presentations. So if this is something you're interested in, you can join the waitlist for the courses via the link in the video description. All right, back to the video. Now, the final chart is what's called a dumbbell chart. And over here is the data sets we'll be using for the demonstration. So let's copy the cells. Move to the layout where we'll be creating the chart, go to the Insert tab, select Chart, and choose a scatter plot. Once inserted, expand the data window, update the cells with your data, and adjust the formatting of the values as needed. Since scatter plots require numerical values for both the x and y axis, we need to convert our category labels into numbers. To do this, add a new column that assigns numeric positions to each category. Now, to visualize the gaps between the data points, Insert a difference column and use the displayed formula to fill the relevant cells. Additionally, add a final column to represent the category labels, assigning a value of 0 to all its cells. Once the table is complete, close the data window. As you can see, the chart doesn't make sense because the correct cells aren't selected. So to fix this, click on Select Data, then delete the difference and Y position legend entries as they are not needed. After that, click Edit for the first legend entry. And in the series x value field, set the corresponding x values accordingly. And for the y values, make sure you select these values and not the actual category labels. Move to the next legend entry, click edit. And in the series x value field, set the corresponding x values accordingly. And for the y values, make sure you select these values and not the actual category labels. Do the same for the last legend entry. So click edit and in the series x value field, set the corresponding x values accordingly. And for the y values, make sure you select these values and not the actual category labels. Once all adjustments are made, click OK and close the data window. 
With the data now visualized, enable connecting lines by selecting the markers, enabling error bars, placing the vertical bars, and then formatting the horizontal error bars by changing their directions and end styles. For the error amount, define the values using the data table. In this case, use the negative error value field and input the series values from the difference column. Now that the plot accurately reflects the data, let's fine tune the chart folder. So, select the vertical axis, and in the axis format options, define your preferred minimum and maximum values. Move on to the horizontal axis. Define your preferred minimum and maximum values and specify unit intervals if necessary. Next, remove the vertical axis entirely and resize the plot area to make room for the category labels. Then select these markers, enable the data labels, and replace the default values with your category labels. To do this, go to the label options, check value from cells, select the text category labels in the data window, Uncheck all other label types and position the labels to the left of the markers. Now let's clean up the chart starting with these markers. So enter the marker options and make them invisible. Move on to the actual data series. So select these markers, enter the marker options, make the marker bigger by increasing their size, removing their outlines and customizing their colors to your preference. Move on to the next markers. So select them and maintain consistency by matching their sizes, customizing their colors to your preference, and removing their outlines. Next, select the error bars, customize their colors to your preference, and increase the transparency and width of the lines. After that, select the horizontal grid lines, reduce the width of the lines, and change the color to your preference. Repeat the same for the vertical grid lines, reducing the lines width and changing the color to your preference. Now, select the horizontal axis, maintain consistency by matching the width and color of the outline, then go to the axis options and position the label above the plot. Once that is done, enable the slide grid lines to assist with object alignments, and using the grid lines as a guide, adjust the chart size and plot area as needed, and position it correctly on the slide. I'll just speed run through this process. Once positioned, enable the legend for the chart, position it at the top of the chart, adjust the plot area to accommodate the legend, increase the font size, delete any unnecessary legend entries, and position the legend toward the top right of the chart area. With that done, you can then add your titles and source notes to complete the design. For this, I'll simply paste the text from my clipboard. With the text inserted, make any necessary adjustments to ensure all elements are properly aligned on the slide. All right, that's going to do it for today's video. I really enjoy making these kinds of visuals, so let me know in the comments if you'd like a part two. And if you're interested in chart templates that follow top consulting and leading firm standards, check out the Analyst PPT Toolkit, the links in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.